After graduating from University of Gondor, I applied around 37 places, failed. How a psychologist was able to really tap into your creative side? When I was a kid, when we were in class, I love painting the teacher. Teaching is not about financial issue, it's our passion. I have a plan to develop a theory of African psychology. The students become what they see, what they observe. Bobo doll experiment, just a shocking experiment. Keep hustling, keep fighting. Do not forget your aim. You gotta have to do what you love to do. Good afternoon. This is your Pan-African show called Africa with your host, Gazala Seifu. Today we have yet another exciting uh, guest for you. Welcome to our studio. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me on the show, Kasala. Absolutely, my pleasure. If you could please introduce yourself. And while you introduce yourself, tell us a little bit of your background, where you were born, how you came to be where you are today. My name is Abraham Sagay Abarra. I was born in Borana and grew up there also. And I start my education different places due to my parents' living situation. And I proceed my high school at Moyali Preparatory School. Before that, I attend my elementary in Ethiopia and Kenya, by the way. Oh. Because Moyali means the border town. It's exactly. Yeah, border town between Ethiopia and Kenya. So when you are Moyalian, you have an opportunity to educate in Ethiopia or Kenya. So my parents are well educated. My dad was, now he's not alive, but he was chemistry teacher for over 25 years. And my mom is, she's alive, thanks God. And she's an accountant. So there's a mentality of being educated in Kenya will give you a, a lot more important Opportunity. opportunities, you know, so. So their education system is better, is basically yeah, what, okay. they believe. I mean, yeah. our family believe, uh, all Moyalians believe just so. I attend my elementary in St. Mary Primary School and also in Ethiopia. Then after completing my high school, I joined University of Gondor and I attend psychology. And now I'm a teacher, a school counselor, painter, and a sculptor. Wonderful. Wow. Wow. Okay, this is going to be a very nice interview. Interesting. So what inspired you to pursue psychology at the University of Gondor? Why did you choose to graduate in psychology? The reason why I'm asking you is like, you know, usually when we go to university, some of us don't know mm -hmm. what we want to become. Yeah. You know, you take different kinds of electives for you to decide which way to go. So at what point did you understand or know that you wanted to study psychology? Because it's a serious topic, it's a serious subject also. I decided to learn psychology when I was in high school. I love reading, I love philosophy, I love psychology. That is my passion, really, I really love. How did you get into it in high school? Uh, I mean, I don't know how to say, but what makes me happy is just reading, okay, painting. So reading. Okay. And so I read a lot of books, actually Ethiopian novels, okay. and also the Western, the African. So the more I read, the more I become attractive. So, and the more I become to know psychology, I become so passionate and eager to study psychology. So that makes me just, it blow my mind, just it satisfies my mind because there is a scientific study of mind. You study human behavior since birth up to days. So I don't know, just I feel a love with psychology. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah. That's a good thing to be able because you were exposed by reading so many books. Yeah. Therefore you knew what direction you wanted to take. So you also got into painting and sculpture. Mm -hmm. So I would like to know how a psychologist was able to really tap into your creative side, obviously, right? I mean, granted, 
you know, being a psychologist also lets, allows you to go in so many different directions. But how did you get into the art, into the creative side? To be honest, I get that a lot, that question. Even my teachers, my classmates, Abraham, are you a psychologist or mm -hmm. a painter? And to be honest, still now, I don't know which one to choose, but I, I, I mean, that is just my being, you know? And you enjoy both. I enjoy both because I find out that I, uh, how I am passionate for art when I was a kid. When we are in class, I love painting the teacher, drawing, sketching. So then gradually I find out that so I am an artist and I love that thing. So I continue to paint, I continue to sketch, to draw. And the more I sketch, the more I become perfect. So, so you're self-taught? Yeah, I'm self-taught. I began to fall in love with art as well. But while studying psychology, we, there was a club called Kibama in Gondor University. So there we practice our passion, mm. what you love. Mm. All right? If you want painting, if you want poem, or if you want whatever sculpture, whatever. There, that was just a, a free space that was beautiful. for you yeah. to practice. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Yeah. Really wonderful place. Yeah. So I graduated in psychology. Then also I upgraded and I developed my art there. Then after graduating, I also moved to, as I told you that I, I was born in Borona. So I attended my education in Kenya and Ethiopia. So I'm well aware of the Kenyan society, mm -hmm. all right? So after graduating, I joined the Kenyan community with artworks, which is, for example, like marketplaces and just a lot of just market areas. Mm -hmm. They use a native artists to promote their work, Kenyans, what I love about them. For example, if you open a, a mobile shop or whatever, if you want to promote it, they don't use the Actually, not all of them, but most of them, they use the real artists mm. to paint mobile or whatever. In their store? Yeah, on, the, on their store. Ah. So what I love about them, really. It makes them stand out. That's, yeah. a, that's a brilliant idea you're giving our people. <laughs> yeah. That is a beautiful idea. That, that is idea. just a wonderful. Yeah. I really love about that. I mean, I it's really not just the small shops, but also the big businesses whatever, also just, should yeah, incorporate Yeah, Most artists. of them, most of them, Absolutely. they prefer to work with the uh, real artists. Yeah. So that is what I love about Kenyans. Brilliant. So how do you incorporate your passion for painting and sculpting into your role as a fine art teacher? I love art. So I paint every day. I draw every day. And so while I was in Gondor University, I tried to become a great artist. I was trying my best actually, but which is, which led me now to become a fine art teacher. Actually, not only fine art teacher currently, I'm a school counselor and English teacher as well. So that is what I am currently. As a school counselor, what approach do you take to support and guide your students? As a school counselor, there are actually a lot of techniques to cooperate and interact with your students. Just a lot of theories and approaches. As a counselor, I use, uh, actually in psychology, there are a lot of methods to uh, cooperate with your students. But personally, I prefer the smoothest way, which is I prefer to interact with the students just optimistically. I prefer to interact to being a friendly. I prefer that, that way to interact with my students because the more you become closer to your students, they will be happy and eager to share whatever, what They'll is going on with, with yeah. No. They will become more open mm -hmm. to you as well. So I prefer uh, not to be so hard, just being smooth and- Not a strict teacher. Yeah, not a strict <laughs> teacher. Yeah, I get that a lot from my students. Mm -hmm. I'm not such a strict teacher. I prefer being friendly. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's a good thing that you brought it up because it, this next question, I think, is a good question in a sense where, you know, when I grew up or even when you grew up, when you went to school, how you interacted with your teachers. And now when you see your daughters not there yet, but when you see our children mm -hmm. in school and how they interact with the teachers, it's very different. Exactly. It's, it's different in a sense where I feel like teachers don't get the respect that they should Deserve. or they used to have. Yeah. And I don't know if it's because the age gap, and then we had had this discussion the other day, actually it's the desire of the teachers, it's the way they teach. There's a whole lot behind that. Exactly. How do you balance your roles as a fine art teacher, English teacher, and a school counselor? Because being a teacher in itself, and a parent is hard. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But to be precise, I love my job. I love being a teacher. I love being a school counselor. I love being an artist. So that is what I am passionate about. That is what makes me happy. Mm. So I didn't get anything challenging to okay. balance those things because all of them, everybody do what they love to do right so these things are what i love to do none of them fight they smoothly yeah, all three none go of them fight well to for each you other. yeah brilliant exactly. so you balance them very well exactly. mm -hmm. could you share a memorable experience from one of your travels that has significant impact on you i really love traveling really really when i was in gondor university i traveled from moyali ethiopia by the way there are two moyalis moyali kenya and moyali ethiopia so I, I know both of them, but I'm well familiar with Mueli Topia. So I start my journey from there to UOG, University of Gondor, which is about 1,400 or something kilometers. In what? In How did you go? Bus transportation. Okay. So it took two days or three days. To your surprise, it took me only one day to reach there or here mm. because I don't feel any fed up with traveling. So I start my journey from Moyale to Addis. Then the exact moment I land Addis, I mean, I, I reach Addis, I start my journey to Gondor again. And I take a lot of pictures while traveling. I love uh, window side uh, seats. So I take a pictures and I make paint is out of them. Okay. So I really love that moment. So that really, was something that was, that was very... Yeah, uh, I, I'm okay. not going to forget. Brilliant. What type of books do you enjoy reading and how do they influence your perspective on life and learning? I prefer to read philosophy, actually. Okay. And actually novels, but most of them philosophy. It's philosophy. Uh, in Amharic or English, whatever. Fyodor Dostoevsky, he's a Russian writer, philosopher, really, really, he's a mind-blowing guy. And his well-known book is not just from the underground. Okay. There's also the Amharic version. Okay. You can read it if you mm -hmm. get it. And he influenced me just really, he's a brilliant guy. By the way, uh, Nietzsche also inspired by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Nietzsche is also a philosopher, just a brilliant guy. So... I prefer reading philosophies. Philosophical yeah. books. Okay. How do you use movies and music as tools for personal growth and inspiration? I really love enjoying music and watching movies. Also, the other guy who inspired me the most, just a brilliant guy, Denzel Washington. Just a brilliant guy. Whenever I see his movie or I watch his movie, I began to think over my being. How did this guy really become this genius? I began to think over it, the way he acted and his motivational speeches. Mm -hmm. They are just mind blowing. Mm -hmm. His confidence, he was just my role model really. And I watched almost most of his movies and the speeches. 
as you know he's very strong christian he's a wonderful guy so i use movies and music as a tool uh, i love psychological thriller movies and i love uh, hip-hop and country music as a proud young african what do you have to accomplish in your lifetime in terms of cultural representation and global exploration as a young african i have a plan to develop a theory of african psychology because most of psychology theories are from western mm. which i don't totally disagree with but i agree we should with. have our own yeah but we should have our own because the living standard the lifestyle and everything is different from the western society we africans have a lot of unique lifestyle <sighs> which is different from the western and let me mention you one guy who's called albert sydney Baker, the first african-american school psychologist mm -hmm. he is just genius guy <sighs> so he uh, actually not only him now currently there are same africans who are trying to develop an african psychology association or of course there is african psychology yeah, association. There, 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 is. there is there is but we should have to work on that critically you see the theories that fit with our culture Mm -hmm. which means actually psychology has no boundary it, it, it shouldn't about, have but then yeah, in a way it's about, it should it could it not could, it should yeah, but it, it could, could because it could. of the living standards yeah, between yeah. the two so many differences uh, exactly yeah exactly how do you encourage your students to pursue their passions and seek knowledge beyond the classroom i encourage my students from the very beginning when you are a teacher, you are not only an academic teacher. In my opinion, a teacher should be a lifetime teacher. You have to be empathetic, you see? You have to share your experience and also you have to listen mm. your students. I'm not a strict teacher. I prefer being friendly, being so close to your kids because that will help the students to feel free and confident for them to give you what is going on with their life or school compound. Exactly. And also how much they're understanding what you are teaching them. Exactly. If they're not yeah. open, then you wouldn't know if they understood what you yeah. said. But unfortunately, most of it, being a teacher is, uh, let me mention one thing. If you see a lot of teachers in Ethiopia or Africa or, yeah, okay, let us say in Ethiopia, they don't prefer for, to become a, being a teacher. You see, it is just challenging because if you graduate from university in Ethiopia, you have to be able of supporting yourself and even your families. Mm -hmm. So in any condition, you have to be care employed. It is not about your passion. Okay. It is about surviving. Mm -hmm. You have to get paid. So a lot of teachers are uh, most of them, maybe. I, I prefer being a teacher. It's not prefer. You love being a teacher. I, I love. I love yeah. and I prefer. Yeah. First, I love. I love being a teacher. So I'm doing what I love. Yeah. But if you came to a um, financial issue, it is a, a bit challenging. It's obvious. So, but teaching is not about financial issue. Yeah. So it's about passion it's our passion yeah it's not about salary mm, yeah so what the <laughs> that is the reason why the most of teachers become angry because they're not in it for passion exactly they are not passionate they're doing it as a job as it's a, a job. job for them just to get so, paid yeah so that's that's the difference yeah that's the difference okay if you could tell us what is the characteristics of a good teacher in your eyes since you're a teacher, you would. <laughs> exactly. Okay. As a parent, I could also say something. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so uh, actually, there are a lot of uh, theories and uh, a lot of uh, good teacher characteristics. But uh, let me mention just uh, some of them. The first one is adaptability, which is a good teacher is adapt uh, adaptable and he can engage with students easily. 
The second one is patience. A good teacher is not judgmental. The first thing that is observed from him is just patience, tolerance, and forgiveness. The third one, entertaining. A good teacher makes the classroom an entertaining place. He knows how entertaining. Yeah. And to, basically how to, to catch, capture them. Yeah. Exactly. How to, to catch hold. a student's attention. Yes. Yes. And the uh, fourth one is listener, being active and good listener. The fifth one, empathy. Uh, empathy means understanding a student's feeling because you know why this is so important there is a, an experiment called the Bobo doll experiment it is an experiment by albert pandra it was really shocking just a shocking experiment mm. albert pandra collected 36 students from kindergarten from age three up to six or seven and he's a social psychologist and social learning experiment the students become what they see, what they observe, kids become. And the Bobo doll experiment was, Bobo is, a, uh, by the way, it's a doll, it's a toy. And he collect those students and let them watch some uh, character hitting and beating that doll. Mm -hmm. He let them watch. And after that, he give them the, that Bobo doll. Immediately, those students began to beat it. Beat it. Mm. So that is, kids become what they observe. Yeah. So we gotta have to be critical and empathy to understand their feelings. We have to be careful what we are doing around them. You see? And the sixth one is lifelong learning. A teacher is not only an academic teacher or a math or a science teacher. He shares his experiences or he or her experience. The Nine one is good classroom control. And the tenth one, ethical attitude and discipline, which is the very important thing. Why is it on number 10? <laughs> I was just kidding. It's, it should to be on number one. It right? should be number one, yes. yes. <laughs> to your surprise, there is a, okay, let me give you one concept. There is what we call it uh, intellectual arrogance. Mm -hmm. It is creepy behavior, by the way. Intellectual arrogance means you are literate, and on the flip side, you are arrogant. Oh boy. Being unable to respect others. Being a concept of not questioned and not challenged. They so why is it called intellectual? Because they are intellect, which is, by the way... But if they are illiterate, they are not intellectual. Uh, yeah, actually it is, okay, yeah, good question you, you raise. <laughs> intellectual arrogance is, uh, that guy may be uh, literate. <gasps> So being literate is not good enough for you. You have to be disciplined as well. Mm -hmm. What we call it, literal discipline. You have to be dis well disciplined, mm -hmm. all right? Just because you know or you are literate enough, it doesn't mean you are the smartest guy. Right. There are a lot of moral ground mm -hmm. in the society, in the school compound, in everywhere. And you have to respect that. Mm -hmm. uh, being uh, literate don't have to drive you to be disrespectful for others, all right? Unfortunately, we are, most of teachers are really good at being arrogant, unfortunately. Mm. And they don't listen, they don't leave an opportunity for to the students. kids. Oh. Let me read it in Amharic. We are really good at saying, Zimba, Zimba, Bay, Kirkazi. So Which it, lead the student is to become uh, traumatized. Yeah. What we call it childhood trauma. I would think, that your last words should be not to students, but to teachers. Exactly. For teachers to be good teachers, because I think that is one thing we are lacking in our country currently, is teachers taking their job seriously and educating our students to the best of their ability. Exactly. I mean, the only thing you could do is to the best of your ability. And sometimes your ability could also mean beyond the classrooms doesn't have to necessarily be there exactly. because you are leaving a print yeah. on my child's life. <laughs> exactly. So, so go for way, it. By um, the I'm not the perfect guy here, okay? Nobody's perfect. Yeah, exactly. Nobody's perfect. Yeah. I have a lot of limitations and problems as well. Mm -hmm. But what I am aware of is that as a teacher and as a school counselor and we have to listen to our students, students because we are the big picture for them in their entire life. Mm. All right? 
the big picture for a student is a teacher. So they become what they observe. So we have to be empathic. We have to treat them. We have to love them. All right. Of course, we Europeans, uh, we love everybody. Of course, we are well known for being lovable. All right. Mm. But specifically as a teacher. It's teacher, teacher, student relation. Yeah. Teacher, student relation. We have, there is a, a boundary. We have to break that boundary, which is respectfully. You see, all right? yeah. Just respectfully. Doesn't mean that they, they, they have to go here and there and not like that. But of course, there should be a boundary, but that boundary don't have to make students to become just uncomfortable. Uncomfortable, mm -hmm. all right? Or you want to be unapproachable exactly. as teachers. So yeah. They have to develop a sense of positive mind. All I'm saying is that we have to be respectful for our children. We have to be empathic. We have to let them speak. We have to dig the reason behind their mistakes. Mm. There is a lot of punishment skills. I don't totally agree with physical punishment, by the way. So there are a lot of smart punishment skills. Mm. There's a lot of different ways. Yeah, they don't have to be punished physically all the time. Mm. By the way, it is difficult. It is very dangerous. There is what you call it hysteria, which uh, psychological illness become and a physical illness that is very, very creepy thing. Mm. You see? It's dangerous. So we have to treat our students, give love and be empathic. Beautiful. What advice would you give to other young Africans who aspire to explore the world and pursue their dreams? I'm not qualified enough, enough to advise. Well, we're never, but, we never, uh, but uh, you've gone a certain, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. a certain, uh, you know, you, you're advanced. Uh, yeah, exactly. For some of the people that would be watching the show. Exactly. You know, and I always don't like using that word advice because who are we to advise anybody? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. So it's just an opinion. Sharing you know. an you're experience. You're sharing what you went through exactly. and whoever finds it useful will use it and who don't. Yeah. Never give up. While I never give up, I didn't say just out of blue. Let me tell you one story. After graduating from University of Gondor, I applied around 37 places. For a job? For a job. As a psychologist? As a psychologist, whatever. At this point, it was any job? Yeah, any job. Uh, you you got to have to be survived. Unfortunately, See? yeah. Unfortunately, it failed. 37 of them. Wow. And, you know, I began to think that, so I failed, right? Mm -hmm. To surprise, um, extreme self-confident guy. I tell myself that. Those are seven companies lost around. It, it wasn't your loss. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it wasn't my loss. They lost me. Yeah. So, of course, never give up. Every day bring us a new opportunity. You see? Every day. Keep fighting. Do not forget your aim. You're going to have to do what you love to do. That is what uh, all I'm saying. I'm glad you said that because usually everybody says that. Don't ever give up. Yeah. It's not an advice, but you've gone through and to reach to the level that you've gotten, you had to go through a lot of struggles. You had to make a right, a left, go forward. You know, you had to do a lot of zigzags. Yeah. But you made it because you were somebody that followed yeah. what he wanted to do. Exactly. So it's obvious uh, being employed in Ethiopia is just once in a blue moon, mm. just very rare. Mm. But you got to have to use that 1%. Mm. That 1% will bring you a lot of thousands of opportunities. Yeah. You got to have to go through it. You don't have to seek for comfort zone. Mm. There are a lot of ups and downs. So, and those are what make you into the yourself, human that we yeah, become, right? That, that will what make you yeah. a very strong person. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Abraham, I thank you very much for taking this chance, this opportunity, this moment, because I know you're very busy and you came from very far away. Mm -hmm. But we want to say thank you for coming to our studio and giving us this opportunity to talk to you. Thank you. For coming over well. and giving us this opportunity. This is your Pan-African show called Africa with your host, Kazalor Seifu. 
Thank you again for tuning in.